A video game patch started out as, well, just that, a patch. A quick fix to an issue that came up after a video game was released. Maybe a bug that wasn't discovered during testing, or an exploit to a multiplayer game that gives nasty players a bigger advantage. But as time went on, patching a game became a big crutch for developers, and now players are starting to resent the idea of a patch to a game because often that means it's fixing major issues that the game never should have been shipped with, or at the very worst, adding content later down the line that was promised at launch. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The main argument against major post-release patches and patching in content is that many gamers feel they shouldn't be necessary or have ever been allowed to happen in the first place. Back in the day, you bought a game in a box from a store, and the developers were unable to tamper with it at all. That was the finished product, for better or worse. When you turn something on, you expect it to... Okay, there we go. Today, however, the creators of practically every game will keep tweaking after release, much to the ire of many an impatient gamer. The biggest gripe by far is day one patches. After all, when you buy a game on release day, the assumption is you'll be able to play that game on release. Those against day one patches would argue that developers should test their games properly and make sure that any issues that can be resolved are resolved by the time it ships. I don't know why people get into video games. The competency of studios is inevitably called into question, especially when games like We Happy Few or Agony, which released with an enormous range of technical issues. In the latter case, Agony had promised mature content that was cut before the game came out. Yikes. Considering We Happy Few spent two years prior to release in early access, it seems strange that so many issues were present. But since such problems, which crop up in more games than they don't, can be game-breaking and render a title completely unplayable, surely it's better at that point to release a patch than to let the game flounder and sink. It would be wrong, however, to lay the blame for extensive patching and recoding at the door of the development studio. The real culprits are the large publishers who want to force their titles out for a certain release date, usually the fourth quarter of the year to coincide with Christmas when sales peak. When Assassin's Creed Unity released in 2014, it was awash with so many glitches it became a laughing stock and permanently damaged the reputation of the Assassin's Creed series. Uh. This is more to the fault of Ubisoft sticking diligently to the yearly release cycle with little respite for the developers themselves, meaning they didn't have time to polish the game before it had to ship. While Unity runs smoothly if you play it today, thanks to patches, at the time it left a sour taste in many gamers' mouths. Studios are still under tremendous amounts of pressure to meet their publishers' deadlines rather than take their time, which is responsible for quality control slipping across the board. Screamer here. At the other end of the spectrum are studios like Naughty Dog and CD Projekt Red, who both take a meticulous, perfectionist approach to their IPs. Game-breaking issues are few and far between in The Last of Us and Uncharted, while CD Projekt Red have said they're not afraid to keep delaying the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 if it leads to a better game. Amateur hour, Jesus. There's some speculation that Cyberpunk may not be released until 2020, meaning that it would have been in development for eight years after its 2012 announcement. It's also worth noting that both publishers have been accused of overworking their employees towards the end of the game's development, a common practice in the video game industry known as crunch. But not all studios have the resources of these ones. 
nor the glowing reputation that leads AAA publishers to put their trust in them, meaning that in an ideal world, games would spend as long as they need in development. The current state of the industry means this just isn't possible. Yep, being a raging bitch to whoever's doing my dirty work for me. It's a sad fact that it's an industry requirement at the moment to release enormous patches for games to cope with demanding release cycles, but there's still more to patches than meets the eye, especially if you're buying physical copies of your games. Game discs are written weeks before the game comes out, but rather than cease all production on a title after the discs are written, companies continue working on their games right up to the crunch. You know what? I can see you guys are busy. This means that the additional content you get with a day one patch simply didn't exist when the disc was being written, and also the issues may have been found after the game was supposedly complete. This is why day one patches are necessary, and while it can be argued that the games should be finished before the discs are written. <laughs> But what about patches and changes that could potentially revitalize what was previously considered a bad game? Take Diablo 3 for example. Server issues at launch, controversy over the auction house, and lukewarm reception left fans of the series cold. But with the release of the game's first expansion, Reapers of Souls, two years after launch, the game was completely revitalized, removing many of the things fans didn't like about the game and adding a slew of new features. The same can be said of No Man's Sky, which has slowly but surely added in many of the promised features that were missing at launch, most notably with the recent Next update. Look, these games should have been great from the start, but without patches, they would have never reached their potential. We're sure that the many players who still play Diablo 3, or the slew of players who have picked up No Man's Sky since their big update, are more than happy to have these dramatic changes after the fact. While releasing an unfinished game with missing features and fixing them later with patches is dubious in most circumstances, developers working to continually improve their IP is almost never a bad thing. They want to improve their products for gamers so that we have a better experience. And if waiting for a patch to install means the difference between a 9 out of 10 game and a 10 out of 10 game, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Even on day one. I've seen you play. It's right. jumping and running, and I have a natural talent oh. for that. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.